Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Church of St. Mary and Martha Parish on this 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The priest celebrant is the parochial vicar, Father Justin Miller. I am Paul Saltarello, the lector. Father Leoy will serve as the cantor. We begin a liturgy with the singing of the entrance antiphon for this 18th Sunday. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh Lord, do not delay. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh Lord, do not delay. Let there be shame and confusion on those who seek my life. O oh, let them turn back in confusion who delight in my harm. O oh, God, come to my assistance. O oh, Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh, Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we remember that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so let us acknowledge now our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the author of our faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. Drink wine and milk. 
Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. All your work shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. The hand, the hand of, of the Lord, Lord feeds us. He, he answers, answers all our needs. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open their hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The hand, the hand of, of the Lord, Lord feeds us. He, he answers all our needs. The Lord is just to all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him who call on him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth for any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from all their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, 
There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' heart is moved for the needs of these people. His heart is stirred with compassion for us as well. And if we get to the heart of this incredible gospel, great truths are unveiled, revealed to us. It's a true story, a real miracle. And we can receive the fruits of it also. We can see miracles in our own life. And it cuts to the heart of our own situation. So let's get deeply now into this story. The five loaves, two fish feed a vast crowd, all because of Jesus and the, the wellspring, the gift of his heart. That's sort of how the passage begins. His heart is moved with pity for these great crowds. His heart had been previously pondering the death of John the Baptist and in isolation, in a, a prayerful solitude, he's hiding on a boat so that he can be alone, alone with his father in prayer, and maybe alone just to process all the events. You know, in his human nature, he needed downtime. And yet, when he looks out and sees on foot, this huge crowd has found him out, even in his hiding, his heart is moved with pity for them, this is really, really powerful, and he turns to them. He turns and gives, even when his resources are low, he gives himself to them. Now, let's go deep into this, this passage because it's, it's a parable for us. It is, yes, a true story, but it also shows us a lot about what's going on in our hearts, in our situation. So the first thing is that when human hearts are broken, Jesus breaks his heart to help us, to heal us. See, these people are desperate. They wouldn't have been spending hours, days finding him, and then spending the whole rest of the day with him, waiting for his teaching, if they weren't desperate, if their hearts weren't broken. There were many sick people that Jesus healed that day. But that meant that the sick had to get out of their comfort to reveal that to God and to say, this is what needs healing. And their hearts are broken enough to take that risk. They go out of their way. Now, many of them may have been outcasts in society. Maybe they could do this because they didn't have jobs. They could spend their time with Jesus. But in any case, his heart is moved with pity for their brokenness. And we have brokenness too, broken over the, the virus. Maybe we ourselves have lost jobs or our job is threatened. The future of our job may be threatened too. And there's any number of things from, from addictions to just anxiety and, and, and worrying, worrying thoughts. All of these things break our hearts. And yet we can bring those broken hearts to Jesus and we can say, heal me. And he, he is moved with compassion for them. He will bring healing to us. 
Now, what's interesting is then how the disciples view this. They're, they seemingly have a fun time all throughout the healing and the, the teaching of Jesus. But then their hearts, the disciples' hearts, begin to question. And so this is sort of the second thought here is, what are our hearts questioning? Are our hearts set on the wrong things? What they're wondering is, the disciples is, there's no time left. The sun is going down. We've got this huge crowd here. We've got no way to lodge them for the night or to feed them. And so their hearts are set on a narrow strategy. It is perhaps prudent to wonder how they're going to eat, but it's also limiting the power of God to say, we have to just break everything up because there's no chance for food here. See, Jesus has something very different in mind. Jesus' heart is set on the miracle, and their heart is set on everyday life, the normal means of resources. And so when our hearts are set on the wrong things, even if it's normal things, but if that's all we're seeking, then Jesus can actually break our hearts or break through. Just uh, in two seconds, I, at one point in my life, really wanted to go to a certain college. I was obsessed about getting into this college. And when I didn't get in, my heart was broken. But God used that because the college I did go to it was a beautiful experience of conversion that I probably never would have got at my desired uh, university. So God sometimes breaks all of our plans to bring about something better. And in this case, he brings about the miracle. Now it's interesting, he brings that miracle of food to hungry hearts. So when our hearts are hungry, Jesus blesses and breaks bread for us. He feeds us with himself. See, it's very interesting. They have some resources, limited resources, and yet Jesus is going to abundantly provide. Just like at this Mass, we have simple resources of bread and wine and a little water and the prayers of the church. That's all we have. And yet Jesus is able to bless that. He's able to break it and share it with the multitudes. Some of you are sharing in this Mass from the, through, through technology. And you're not physically here, but the graces are possible. The graces of a spiritual communion. The graces that can feed your hungry heart. Because let's face it, the disciples are concerned only with dinner time. But Jesus is concerned with the deep hungers, the deep stirrings of our hearts. And so he gives himself to us in Holy Communion. Or he gives himself to us in a spiritual communion. And this is profound. Because this is really the miracle here. Jesus takes the content of our hearts, our hunger, our need for him. And he, as I said, blesses, breaks does the miracle of transforming it. And here's the good news. They only had five loaves and two fish, not even enough for the 12 apostles to eat and be filled. But when Jesus can extend that through his sacred heart and its miracle, then they have not only enough for thousands, but they have leftovers. They have a basket full for each of the apostles. So they make out greater in the end but they first had to trust in Jesus and say, Jesus, we're going to give you what we have. We're going to let you bless and let you break it and let you change our plans. And then the miracles begin to happen. So the conclusion that I ask for you to ponder is what is in our heart? Jesus' heart was set initially on a time of prayer by himself, but he turns to the needs of others. And he allows himself to be broken. And he breaks these, these loaves and he has an incredible Eucharistic themed miracle here for us. In this Mass, I want you to ponder, I want you to pray about what is our heart set on? What do we really want? Do we just want the next meal? Do we just want security in our own limited envisioning of it? 
Do we just want to go back to normal? Jesus doesn't want us to go back to normal. He wants a miracle to happen in our midst. He wants us to be satisfied in our infinite hunger, satisfied with himself and his holy presence in holy communion. So this, this thought then is we should ponder, and, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you have my permission to stop the Mass right now, to take a few minutes and ponder, what do I really want? And is that what Jesus wants? Is that what his heart is yearning for my life, for my family's life? And if you are watching this on TV, ponder that today. Because so often it is only our heart's desires that are wayward. Maybe we desire sin. Maybe we desire selfishness. And then we block the power of God. As Paul says, nothing can separate us. Angels, demons, no human power except our will. If we are set on something other than what God wants, we just say no. We just block the miracles that he wants to happen in our midst. And so to paraphrase in conclusion, this prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola, Lord, take my heart, take my memory, my understanding, my entire will. Give me only your love and your grace, and that's enough for me. May we give our hearts broken and hungry to Jesus and wait for whatever miracles and whatever satisfaction he will give. As we stand, we profess our faith. We profess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We remember God's promise that we will delight in rich fare. We present now our prayers with trust in God's faithfulness. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the church, that we live in such a way that we will draw all believers to know Christ Jesus, we pray. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, you, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders across the country and throughout the world, for cooperation in working to eradicate hunger, homelessness, and poverty, we pray. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, you, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who work on farms or ranches or the sea or in factories to provide food for the world, we pray. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are unable to join us around the stable, for those longing to receive the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, we ask, we ask you, you, hear our prayer. 
and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. We pray. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you to hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Loving God, may your generosity be a model and inspiration for us as we strive to share with those in need. Answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Usually this time the ushers will take up the collection, but since that is not possible, we encourage you that you make your Sunday offering either by mailing in your envelope or by using an electronic giving or credit card, both of which are available on our parish website. Thank you for your generosity. Our offertory antiphon, Moses prayed in the sight of the Lord his God and said, Why, O Lord, is your anger enkindled against your people? Let the anger of your spirit cease. Be mindful of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you swore to give a land flowing with milk and honey. And the Lord was appeased from the evil which he said he would inflict upon his people. Moses prayed in the sight of the Lord his God and said, Why, O Lord, is your anger enkindled against your people? Let the anger of your spirit cease. Be mindful of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you swore to give a land flowing with milk and honey. And the Lord was appeased from the evil, which he said he would inflict upon his people. Moses prayed in the sight of the Lord his God and said, Why, O oh Lord, is your anger enkindled against your people? Let the anger of your spirit cease. Pray, brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion and the fun, you have given us, O Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste. You have given us, O oh Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste. Give ear, my people, to my teaching. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and utter hidden lessons of the past. You have given us, O oh Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delight and sweetness in every taste. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, these we will hide from their children, but will tell them to the next generation. You have given us, O oh Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delight, and sweetness in every taste. It has long been a Catholic understanding that when circumstances prevent one from receiving sacramental communion, it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, spiritual communion is an ardent desire to receive Jesus 
in the most holy sacrament and lovingly embrace him at a time or in circumstances when one cannot receive sacramental communion. And so let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.